Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Grace Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate in the process. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. Welcome to the third installment of our B. Complete series, where we are talking about all of the smaller ways we can take care of our body and ourselves after 40 to leave us feeling more balanced, centered, strong, and limber. B. Complete is an acronym for the six areas we cover in my new online on demand class that launches July 26, 2022. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how to get that later in this episode. I used to teach a lot of group fitness classes. So like typical, I would go to a gym, I would run a workout, I would go home. The next time I went back, people were like, Oh my gosh, Amy, I was really hating you the next day. <laughs> one of my uh, one of my participants called me the leg lady, not because I had great legs or anything, but because we did a lot of lower body strengthening. We did squats and we did lunges and then we did lunges and we did squats and rinse and repeat. It was a whole lot of legs. Squats and lunges are great. In fact, I have been doing those a lot with my teen clients this summer. But the problem with only doing squats and lunges is they focus on what I call big sexy muscles. So those are great for the quads, the squats, squats and lunges, great for your quads, which is the front of your thighs, the hamstrings, which are the back of your legs, and then the gluteus maximus or, you know, your rear basically. Um, but they don't always engage the smaller muscles or what I call the mini muscles that are just as important, but they don't get the credit. In our balance discussion two weeks ago or two episodes ago, I mentioned the kinetic chain, which is basically like a ripple effect from whatever you're moving and it works its way down the rest of your body or out of the rest of the body. Weak mini muscles ripple down to other joints, especially your knees, which we'll talk more about here in a second. They're also part of your core muscles, which was last week's discussion. So we're actually kind of having a two part discussion about your core, but this one today is more targeted. So if you missed either one of those, which are B and CO in the B dot complete, I encourage you to go back and listen to them. Today we are getting into M in B. Complete, and you can probably figure out that the M means many muscles. This is one of the greatest ways I know how to explain the importance of mini muscles. They are kind of like the sound technician at a concert. If you've ever been to a concert, you know that the people on stage with the microphone or with the instruments get all kinds of glory, right? Like they're the ones dancing, they're the ones rocking, they're getting us up, they're getting us cheering. If it's a super exciting concert, the sound technician sits in the back, probably in the dark with a mixing board and their equipment. And we don't even think about them but they're definitely working. And you especially know if they're not working or if something goes wrong, if the microphone goes out or if it's not picking up the guitar or the drums or any of those things that work when you, when they work, you don't even think about it. But then when they don't work, you're like, Oh yeah, something, something was not working very well with that. So that's kind of how your mini muscles are. You may not even think about them until you're injured. And then what happens is you either go to a doctor and you have surgery or you go to a physical therapist or you go to a, a myofascial release place like a Rosti. And then all of a sudden they're focusing on your mini muscles often often, especially if you have lower extremity issues. But this is the deal. You don't have to have a literal pain in the butt or pain in the knee or have any kind of injury to focus on them. In fact, if you will give just a little bit of attention to these muscles, then it may prevent some other serious injuries or even just kind of nagging injuries later on. So, okay, let me qualify here. What exactly I'm talking about when I say mini muscles, because I think this is a term that I created, but I'm not really sure. I really don't remember if I heard it somewhere. 
The mini muscles I'm talking about are the smaller muscles surrounding your hips and your buttocks. So typically when you hear the word glutes, you just kind of think of one big muscle. And it is true that your gluteus maximus is the largest muscle in your body. But did you know that you have five other muscles underneath that gluteus maximus? One of them is a gluteus minimus. There's another that's a piriformis that often runners will have kind of piriformis issues. And there's some other ones that I won't get into, but you, that muscle, it's kind of like you can peel it back and there's all of these other muscles that actually go, uh, most of them will go sideways. They go laterally across your body with the exception of your gluteus minimus. Then there's your gluteus medius. And this is one that I really focus on a lot with my clients, especially like right now, my team clients, I have a lot of them who are athletes who are running a lot. They're doing lateral stuff. They're playing soccer. They're playing volleyball They're playing softball. And I want to make sure that their gluteus medius is strong. I'll tell you why here in a second. So this is the muscle that connects the top of the iliac crest, which is kind of like that top of your hip bone and to your femur, which is your thigh bone. And it's kind of on the outside of your body. So what I like to do is have people actually kind of feel. So if you'll feel on your hip to that top bone, that's your iliac crest. And then if you go down and you feel you, this is better done standing by the way, instead of sitting, but you can feel your joint. It's called your trochant, greater trochanter joint, which is where your femur comes in. So that meaty portion in between the two of them is your gluteus medius. I like to call it the gush. I have no idea where, why, but this is, (laughs) this is where I come up. These are the things that I come up with. But what this glute medius glute me does is it stabilizes your hips and your pelvis. So that keeps your gait um, strong. It keeps your gait walking forward. So you're not kind of walking with this funny little uh, twerk is what I'm wanting to say, but mm, I don't know. I don't know what kind of image that gives you. So not that kind of image. I'm just saying it kind of just gives your, your body a funny little gait. We'll just go with that. <laughs> So if it's weak, what will happen is your femur is not fully supported and it will angle in when you're walking or running. And believe it or not, this is often the cause of knee pain while you are running or walking or biking or something like that. I have clients with knee issues. And one of the things that we really focus on are those glute meads, because if you are stronger up at the top, if you'll kind of imagine the connection point up at the top, and then your femur femur is dangling down, the stronger it is, the more secure your femur will be as it goes down, and then the less pain you will have in your knees. And just as a side note, I do have a free program out on my website called Squat Free Strong Legs that if you have knees that are cranky or creaky, or maybe you've, you know, had some issues or injuries in the past, this is a free program that gives you several different movements and a demo video and then allows you to put it together in a way that works for you. I give you three different workouts with all of, all of the movements. So if you're starting to have some light bulbs go off like, oh my gosh, maybe this is the problem of my knee pain, go over to my website, gracedhealth.com slash strong legs and get that free download and we'll see, maybe that'll help you with your knees. Okay, but now let's talk more about strengthening those mini muscles. This is the thing. There's kind of no glory in them. Like, you know, it's kind of like that sound tech going back to that original analogy. They sit in the back. No one is really applauding their efforts. Now with our body, you know, those big sexy muscles like your biceps or your pectorals, those get the glory. But no one has ever been like, wow, your gluteus minimus looks really fantastic in those jeans. It just, it just doesn't happen. Let me know if that's happened to you, by the way. I would love it if it does, because it means that you're doing all the right stuff. Anyway, when you strengthen your mini muscles, this is the added bonus. Your big, sexy muscles work even better. Those gluteus maximus works better. The um, quadriceps, your hamstrings, because everything is working together and they're not overcompensating for the weaker supporting ones, those gluteus medius, those gluteus minimus, because those are, those are smaller muscles 
And what can happen is when we don't focus on strengthening them, they get lazy. And when they get lazy, they get weak. And when they get weak, then we get injured because they're not doing what they need to be doing. So when you strengthen them, everything seems to work better. And it may be that you find that whatever you're doing is more effective. You can run better. You can squat more. You can lift more with your lower body. All of that because we have holistically strengthened all of those muscles. Then I will, I have to admit, like, this is something I feel super passionate about. I know how important this investment of time is to strengthen these. I teach this to my clients. We often uh, use them in one portion of our workout or another, but I get it. It can be hard to take the time to strengthen those smaller muscles because I have a lot of other ways that I prefer to move. And sitting there doing some of the exercises that I'm going to share with you in a minute, those, that's just not very exciting. Let's be honest. Now, unless you are a, a ballet bar participant, like if you go to pure bar or something like that, where you're doing a lot of, um, quote unquote bar work, that is a wonderful way to strengthen up these mini muscles. So if you're doing that, you're covered, you're good, <laughs> but I'm often fitting my workout into a very small amount of time. I have said before, and I will say it again, my workouts are normally 30 to 40 minutes max. If I'm in the gym for 45 minutes, I'm like, wow, I got a long workout in today. So I'm trying to do as much as I can in a small amount of time. So to that end, what I recommend doing, and this is what I do with my own client programming, is I put mini muscle work into your warm up because they are smaller muscles. It will get the blood flowing with it. It will warm up the muscles and it will activate them. It will wake them up and it will strengthen them. So basically we're telling these muscles like, Hey, we're getting ready to move. And I want you to wake up and I want you to know that these are the things that, that we're going to, you're not going to get to just be lazy anymore. It's time to work. And it can be really helpful. And in fact, I have a client even just this morning who has some knee issues. We did a lot of mini muscle stuff at the first. And then I later asked, how was it with your squats and lunges? She goes, yeah, you know, it's weird. My knee didn't bother me as much. I said, well, that's the mini muscle stuff. So next time you're getting ready to do the, her, her sport and her movement, I was like, try and do a few of those movements and that will help kind of wake them up. So everything's involved. Now, how do we strengthen them? Hopefully I've convinced you the importance of them and you're ready to do some things. So here are a few, um, exercises that I recommend. And some of these are in that squat free strong legs. So again, go grab that if you have not gotten it. One thing that you can do so that you can do them standing and you can do some things that are lying down. So from a standing position, and I always like giving these op these options as well, in case you are doing something like going and meeting your friend at a corner before you guys go walk or run in the morning, or you're kind of standing around. I mean, sometimes it's not conducive to lay on the ground or lie. I never know what the right word is. So I want to give you some things that you can do while you're standing. The first thing is to do some lateral extensions. And basically you're going to stand with your feet about hip width apart, shoulders back, core in, shift your weight over to one side while you keep your your um, shoulders square to the ground. So you don't want to lean. Then take, say, your right foot and internally rotate your leg. So that means that you are lifting that right heel up in the air. You're keeping your right toe on the ground for now, and your knee is rotated in. Then you can lift your legs up and down. The key is to have that internal rotation. If you start taking your knee facing up and your knee is leading up, then you're going to be activating those quads. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the intent of this movement. Another thing you can do is loop walks. So I am a huge fan of resistance loops, which are like 12 inch ish, uh, circumference or diameter loops that are a couple inches wide and they have varying levels of resistance. You can get like five of them for uh, eight to $10, something like that. And you'll put that loop above your knee 
You want it about an inch above the knee, not on the kneecap. And you can walk about 10 paces one way, 10 the other. You kind of want to be like in a little bitty mini squat position. Your knees are facing forward, your feet are facing forward, your hips and your shoulders are forward. And just that a little mini squat going to the side for 10, 10 times and then going to the other side for 10 times. Go back and forth for me. It normally takes three or four rounds and you'll start feeling some heat. Another thing you can do is what I'm going to call a standing fire hydrant. There's probably a formal name for it, but I don't know what it is. Again, you start standing. Everything is a nice, proper posture with your shoulders back and down. Your core is in. Your ears are in line with your shoulders. Uh, Shift your weight over to your, let's say your right foot this time. And again, not leaning. So if you're shifting your weight over to your right side, you don't want your right shoulder going down. You want your shoulders still straight ahead, bend your left knee and go straight out um, and raising it up like a dog at a fire hydrant and then coming back down. Try and stay balanced because guess what? If you do that, you're going to get some bonus balance work in on your right side. But that's another way to get your mini muscles while you're standing. So standing just those three, this is not comprehensive, obviously, lateral extensions with your leg internally rotated loop walks, you're going to have to get a resistance loop, I'll put a link in the show notes. If you are like, I don't know what you're talking about, it'll just take you straight to Amazon, you can get it there, or a standing fire hydrant. And by the way, if it's possible and if it's safe, I recommend doing these either barefoot or with just socks on. I think it's really helpful when our feet can feel the ground below it and we are relying on all of the little neurons and the little muscles communicating back up to our body rather than just relying on our shoes. And particularly if you wear hokas or stabilizing shoes or something like that. And I think I even mentioned that in the balance episode as well. Now laying down, if you have a mat, if you have space to do it, I think these are some really great ones to do as well. The first is clamshells. And the way I like to guide my clients is line yourself up at the back of a mat. Alternatively, if you have a room and you have five and a half feet how or six, depending on how tall you are, of just where you can go up against the baseboard, that's another op- that's a good option as well. Bend your knees, you're going to be on your side, and you're going to have your feet, your hips, and your shoulders all aligned with the back of the mat. You're going to have your loop, again, above your knees, not on your kneecaps, but just an inch or so above your knees. You'll squeeze that top glute. So if you're laying on your right side, I want you to squeeze that top left glute and then just open up your knee. It just has to be like four or five inches. It's, this is not a how wide and how tall can we get our knee? This is just opening up and then closing. You want to have enough resistance And really, if you've got the right resistance, you should be feeling some heat, probably eight to 10 or so reps into it. Do about 15 on one side and then roll over on the other side and do that. Now, the other one is something that you can grow and you can progress as it goes. So I'm going to tell you uh, seven different ways of doing things. And what I want you to do is start with just one. And if you need more, then you can add another one on top of that. And then another one, and it gets up to all seven movements. It doesn't take a long time to do, but who I tell you what, you will feel some fire after you get to all seven of them. And if you need more after that, then you can get some ankle weights, but I have never progressed to that point. I'll just tell you right now. (laughs) Okay. So the seven way hips is once again, I want you laying on a yoga mat or, or you're just wanting to be on a yoga mat. This one doesn't work as well against a wall and your feet your hips and your shoulders are all aligned. And then make sure that your hips are square. It's really easy to shift back on that big meat of the gluteus maximus, because that kind of helps stabilize us. But I want those hips right stacked on top of each other. Now, the first thing that you can do is first, internally rotate that knee or that leg. So what I like to say is kiss your toes together, lift up your heel So your knee and your leg is internally rotated, then raise that leg about 
10 to 12 inches. That's your starting point. So that's home base for all of these movements. From there, exercise one is take your leg up and down, just up and down. Do that about, do that 10 times. Then if you're ready for more from home base, again, leg is extended. It's internally rotated. Move your leg forward about an, a foot, maybe 18 inches, and then take it back to home base. So forward and back to home base. That's exercise two. Exercise three is we're going the other way. So we're going to go back and center. When you do that, it's going to be really tempting to arch your back. So watch your back, engage your core, make sure that you are staying nice and steady along in your core and your uh, torso as you go back and then back to home base, that center. Again, keeping that leg elevated about a foot up. That's number three. Number four, you're going to combine number two and three. You're going to go forward and then back. So it's kind of like a pendulum staying in that internally rotated state about a foot above. Keep your legs nice and straight. Then for number five, you're going to bicycle. So bend that top knee, straighten it, swing it back around and keep doing that. You're just going to go forward with this. So circle bicycling forward. Number six is go back to home base and do some little circles, not big ones, just little circles that you probably are, oh, I don't know, a foot, maybe two feet in diameter. These are not big, huge ones. These are just nice, small ones. And then number seven is circling backwards. So you're going up and down, forward and center, back and center, forward and back, bicycle, circle forward, circle backward. And if this seems like a lot, what I'm going to do is be over on my Graced Health Facebook group that anyone can join. It's free to join, but you do have to head over there. It's not the Facebook page. It's the Facebook group. I'll have a link in the show notes and I will demo this and uh, you can visually see it if you're more of a visual learner. So those are two uh, lying exercises that are really great for your gluteus medius in particular, but also get your gluteus minimus. So those clamshells and then your seven way hips. By the way, I feel like I do need to give credit where credit is due. Those seven way hips I heard on a Tim Ferriss podcast years ago, and it was kind of created by a guy who is a personal trainer. I know he worked with Nike for a while. I think he's out on his own. I'm really sorry. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I did not come up with this. He dubbed it seven way hips. And I feel like I need to give him credit. (laughs) Now, as I mentioned, any of these are a great addition uh, to your warm up. You can just do one or you can do two. I don't think you need to do all of them, but I think anywhere between one and three is a great warm up. It will help getting, get the blood flowing and it will activate your legs. So that way you are ready and prepared for the other larger group muscles that you are going to be working. It's wonderful because they only take a couple minutes and it will make any of your lower body movements, whether or not you are doing strength training or something more cardiovascular, like, uh, like biking or running or walking, it'll make both of those more effective and efficient. Now, if you're looking for more of a a step-by-step way to strengthen those mini muscles, I want you to go over to gracedhealth.com slash presale and get on the list for my new online on-demand class called B.complete. B.complete, like I said, is an acronym for the six areas we cover and it launches July 26th. B.complete is my solution to adding in all of the things that we want to focus on as we age, including feeling balanced and centered and strong and limber all into one low impact program. Or, and when I say program, really it's a class. This is something I personally do once a week because I need it because it helps me do everything else that I like to do. Uh, it just helps me be better at it. It, I feel more limber. I feel like everything is just less tense and stressed and my mind gets right and my body gets right. And it's what I I want it for you too. 
And I designed it as a compliment to whatever it is that you like to do. So I'm not asking you to change anything. I'm just saying here is something that will make your movement better and where you may not get as injured. And it's all in 40 minutes. Now this class is offered at $20, which really is quite a deal because you can do it whenever you want. You can do it as many times as you want. And, uh, I mean, for $20, that's quite a deal. However, you can get the presale pricing by going to gracedhealth.com slash presale before July 19th, receive half off the $20 rate. So you're getting this on-demand class whenever, however many times you want to take it for $10. You just can't get much for $10 these days. I mean, my goodness, you can barely get a gallon of gasoline. So go over there. It's a fantastic deal. I want you to have it. I'm excited for you to have it and go over to gracedhealth.com slash presale to sign up now. Okay. That is all for today. Go out there and have a graced day.